Welcome back to the final episode of CCTV at Chemcon Europe 2022 with today an interview on the Sustainable Product Initiative, some London sightseeing suggestions from our local reporters and first Marianne Heckman with a minor wrap on the Asia Pacific sessions. Today's morning session was about juggling with all new requirements in the APEC countries. So we had a lot of very good presentations about the changes and the updates in the different APEC countries and what we need to do as industry to comply with um, all these legislations. I think the most important update is in Australia where we have to comply with the AICIS and coming from a um, legislation where we just have to check if our substances are listed on the inventory. We now have to uh, have these um, undertaking, um, written undertaking requirements where we have to rely on the suppliers and get information from them in order to be compliant, which poses a big risk of being incompliant um, to companies. Um, also, an, an interesting development is in China where we come from uh, focusing on new chemicals and having to notify new chemicals to uh, more uh, to an approach where the government focuses more on existing chemicals and um, there are developments which have a look on, on different um, aspects of these existing chemicals. And the third really big topic was about Korean REACH where we had um, on the one hand a presentation about um, the Korean REACH law which was, pre which was prepared with the help of the Ministry of Environment to give some background about the legislation and on the other hand a presentation from a, a company's point of view where we could see what the challenges are in the whole process, process of starting the registration until getting the registration number and um, communicating with, with the co-registrants. So a very interesting session and very many uh, very and a lot of information um, yeah on, on all these uh, different countries time for our final report from this week's wonderful reporters Francesca and Adris thank you both for your creative passionate and inspiring way to showcase London are there other attractions or neighborhoods you like to spotlight let's start with a neighborhood we're currently here in the vicinity a great bar and restaurant a true London destination with fantastic views and for instance, you can enjoy their afternoon tea, a British treat that just tastes better here due to the sensational views of the River Thames and Tower Bridge. Before or after the tea, you can of course take a closer look and cross the Tower Bridge via the iconic glass walkway or hop in a boat and follow the river. I've heard that song before. That's from the musical Hairspray. Where do, do I, I go? go? Follow, follow the river. Where do I go? Follow the girls. Where do I go? Follow their smiles. I love to follow your smiles. There's so many things to see in London, so let's do one more report later in this bulletin. Now we go to today's interview where we follow the latest developments of the Sustainable Product Initiative, including the Digital Product Passport, a topic I discussed with Erica Koons and Kevin Pollard. Kevin, the Echo Design for Sustainable Products Regulation, the ESPR, will be the cornerstone of EU circular economy action plan. Can you explain what it aims to achieve? Yeah, there's, there's multiple objectives there, Cheert, and indeed the, the cornerstone of, of the action plan. Um, so the ESPR is, is targeting um, basically an acceleration towards more circular economy, uh, more efficient use of resources, uh, working within so-called planetary boundaries. Um, and you'll hear more about this uh, in, in the, the conference session from, from the Commission, from Christina. Some of the main highlights, uh, the concept of digital product passports to give uh, transparency on substances of concern both to waste operators and consumers. There will be a series of standards and requirements in terms of reusability, repair repairability, and there's also the possibility to set um, sustainability restrictions. Uh, which I would see as complementing what REACH and COP do in, in terms of addressing chemical, chemical risk. So those are some of the highlights. I don't know if Erica maybe wants to add. Yes, uh, indeed. I, I think uh, it was presented as making sustainable products the norm. And, and this describes very well the overall aim to create more transparency and more knowledge on sustainable products to track and trace what is really in, to create more understanding along the value chain, 
Um, and this is uh, what we, as a chemical industry, really welcome very warmly. Good, and uh, thanks for that, Erica, because that made, made me wish to add. Um, this is going to be a relatively long journey. This is planning until 2050. Uh, there are already a number of front runners in the circular economy, and as Erica said, it's to normalize and have the mainstream. So the idea is not only products would be more safe, more sustainable, but we would have in, in, encouraged an innovation, investment, new technologies, new processes uh, that can also put us on a, on a stronger footing on the global economic stage. So it's, it's both about safety, sustainability, plan, planetary boundaries, but also equally important e economic sustainability and advantage. Yeah. Please watch the complete interview on our website and YouTube channel. Now it's time for the statement of today. Today's statement is related to new hazard classes. With us in our studio, Nigel Sargenson of Exxon Mobile. Hi Nigel, please tell us more about these new hazard classes. Hi Chad. I think the most important uh, point to make firstly is that we already are identifying endocrine disruptors via the REACH regulation. We have a good system in place. We have an ECHA expert group on ED with all stakeholders involved. So we have a system that works and that really then begs the question, do we need new hazard classes? Do we? Uh, well, I, you know, there's the potential for a duplication. Um, the adverse effects of endocrine disruptors are already identified um, via the CLP. So there's a big question there. Are they really needed? Are they going to add value? Probably they're going to cause confusion potentially and, um, and use up resources as well, precious resources that we need for, for other activities. And then thirdly, and, and very importantly, we need to maintain harmonization via the UN GHS system. And the danger of the EU going on its own with CLP is that we lo will lose that harmonization with the danger of non-tariff trade barriers, for example. And your statement is? My statement is the EU should not deviate from the GHS. More on the new hazard classes in our final session of ChemCon Europe 2022 in London. Time for our final, final report from Francesca and Adris. I'm very curious, what is your grand finale? There are so many things to do and see in London. That's why it's so lovely to live here. And as a visitor, you want to come back and explore more. So I suggest we sing one more song to showcase several London attractions. And the great thing about that is, all London attractions and locations shown in today's report can be accessed by using the London Pass and purchased for one day, a few days, or even 10 days. So, what song shall we sing, Address? How about uh, Never Enough from The Great Showman? I'm trying to hold my breath Let, Let it stay, stay this way. Never, never Never, never Never For me, for me Indeed, never enough. There's so much to do and see in London and of course at ChemCon conferences. So let's conclude with the forecast of the day. Today we start with the developments in India and Turkey, followed by a session on supply chain communication with topics like the skip database, poison center notification and the sustainable product initiative. And in the afternoon, an all-time favorite, GHS implementations and global hazard communication, including the latest update on the EU CLP revision. Thank you for watching, we hope you liked it and we look forward to seeing you next year at Chemical the Americas 2023 in San Francisco.